Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. It's Tuesday with Pastor Pappy. This Tuesday, I'm at youth camp in Waxahachie, Texas with seven kids from our youth group. Last night, we had a powerful worship service, and I watched all seven of these young people hunger for more of God. Today's Beatitude is about that very thing, hungering for more of God. Listen to Douglas. This video is going to have like the longest title ever. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today we're going to be talking about the Beatitudes some more. Yeah, and the one that we're looking at today is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now again, like all of these Beatitudes are talking about, Jesus is talking about people who seem really unfortunate, but are actually very blessed. And I don't really know anybody who likes being hungry, right? That's not like a good thing to be. Nobody likes being hungry. In fact, it's a very good thing to help people who are hungry. You know, there are people all over the world who don't have enough to eat, and, and it's good for us to do what we can to help them to get the food that they need. People who are hungry are, are usually thought of as being very unfortunate. And Jesus isn't talking here about being hungry for food, although he does say something pretty similar to that in the book of Luke. But he, he's saying that blessed are you if you are so wanting to be righteous, if you are so wanting to do what is good, that it hurts. It hurts in the same way that, that, that it hurts when you're hungry. And that word righteousness, it just means, it just means doing what is right. And so if you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you're, you are hungry and thirsty for wanting to do the right thing. You know, there was this one time where uh, I was running late for school, so I didn't get to have breakfast, and I was also running so late that I forgot to grab my lunch, and uh, I didn't even have my little card with me. You know, my mom usually sends with me in case I forget my lunch so I can get something from the cafeteria, but I, I forgot that little card too. So, so I didn't have any breakfast, and then I didn't have any lunch at school, and then I had soccer practice right after school. And so I was taking the whole day with no food. Now, some people go even more than a day. But for me, even just skipping two meals made me feel uncomfortable. Now, some people, again, are in really, really bad situations where they go days and days without food. But all day, I was just thinking, oh, I just want some spaghetti. Just specifically, I wanted spaghetti really bad. And just spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. All day, I'm thinking I want some spaghetti. And my stomach is hurting. And, and uh, you know, it was really uncomfortable. But when I got home... There was a big old plate of spaghetti waiting for me. And so I'm hungry for spaghetti all day. And then at the end of the day, turns out that's what I get. I get the spaghetti. And I was so happy and I ate so much. It was, it was, it was very satisfying. It was very good. Now the whole day at school, you know, if you could hear my tummy rumbling or if you knew that I was super hungry, you wouldn't think to yourself, oh, Douglas is super lucky. I want to be just like Douglas. He's so hungry. You might say I was lucky. You might say I was blessed if you knew what was coming, if you knew that I was going to get some spaghetti at the end of the day. But just that feeling of being hungry, that's, that's something that most people, you know, spend a good portion of their day trying to avoid. Now, if you are a Christian, that pretty much means that you want to be like Jesus, right? That's, that's pretty much what a Christian means, someone who is following Christ, someone who is trying to be Christ-like. And man, when I look at the example that Jesus set for us, you know, the way that he loved people who seemed unlovable, the way that he, that he stood up for what was right, the way that he, he did what he was supposed to do and did not do what he was not supposed to do, man, he, he is the only one who has never, ever, ever sinned. He set an amazing example for us. But, but that example that he set for us and, and the call that he has given to each of us to do what is right, that can be kind of intimidating sometimes and even uncomfortable. Because if you say, yeah, I want to do what's right, and then you mess up, that's a really, really uncomfortable feeling. I, I know I get very embarrassed when I do something that I know is wrong. Maybe not in that second do I feel embarrassed, but, but as soon as I realize what I did, that's a very uncomfortable feeling. And some people, when they get that uncomfortable feeling, they, they try to, you know, just, just explain it away or ignore what they're feeling. You know, ignore that tugging of the Holy Spirit saying that what you did was wrong. And they say, well, I can't be just like Jesus. Jesus is God, right? I can't do what he did. And so maybe it's okay for me to just mess up sometimes, so I'm not even going to try. But I think here when Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I think that when he says that, he's saying that it's good to feel a little uncomfortable. 
it's good to feel bad when we do what's wrong. Now, again, I don't think God wants us to just give up and be like, oh, I messed up. I'm the worst ever. No, I think he's saying that, that when we mess up, we should allow ourselves to feel bad for what we've done and try to do better next time. We're supposed to try so hard that it kind of hurts. You know what I mean? It hurts in the same way that your stomach hurts when you're hungry. And so my challenge to you guys today is that you would hunger and thirst for righteousness, that you would, that you would want to do what is right so bad that it, it kind of hurts a little bit and that you'll keep trying and keep trying even when you mess up. Because if your goal is to do what is right, if your goal is to be righteous and be like Jesus Christ, if you want that so bad that it hurts, Jesus says that you are blessed because you will achieve your goal. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. It might be a long time. But if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you will be filled. You know what many of us are hungry for? The approval of people. We want our parents to tell us they're proud of us. We, we want our boss to tell us we did a good job. We want our friends to think we're good enough for them. Deep down, this longing for acceptance comes from a longing to be found right in God's eyes. We are hungry for righteousness. But sadly, we often try to satisfy our hunger by gorging on junk food. We want approval from others so badly that we're willing to compromise our beliefs. Adults want to prove themselves through their jobs so badly that they burn out on their career, sacrificing family and health. We want so badly to be accepted that we build our lives on a system of rules looking down on others and sinking into despair when we just don't measure up. These junk foods, they can't satisfy our hunger for righteousness. Later in his ministry, Jesus illustrates how he satisfies hungry hearts. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus offers us his own righteousness, and God credits us with it so that we can enjoy the acceptance and the approval that we long for. I hope today that you're feeding on the food that satisfies your spiritual needs. Loving Father, I long for Jesus more and more. I hunger and I thirst for righteousness in my life. I'm so thankful that Jesus clothed me in his righteousness when I trusted in him for salvation. Help me to nail my self-righteousness to the cross and to be guided today by your Holy Spirit to the praise and the glory of Jesus, in whose name I pray. Amen.